So SAML identity provider initiated single sign-on. So in this pattern, we assume that the user is already logged in to the identity provider and they're taking some action which prompts the identity provider to redirect them to the service provider with a valid SAML assertion which has been signed and confirms their identity and allows them to just be logged straight into the, to the service provider. So at a high level prerequisites that we need, so all the systems involved need to need to offer SAML, um, ideally the latest specification version, and we'd want them to we'd want to ensure that all of the recommended security measures are are, um, are, are in place. We also need the certificate and the entity ID from the identity provider to be set up in the service provider. So this allows the service provider to to verify that the SAML assertions are um, are correct and are provided by the correct identity provider and it allows it to correlate the assertion with the identifier as well of, of, that, of that identity provider. The, we need the SAML assertion consumer service URL from the service provider uh, to be configured within the identity provider and also the unique entity ID, so that's, um, that's, that's a URL format uh, unique identifier for the service provider to be set up in the identity provider. So assertions are, um, are, are sent to the right place. They're sent to the assertion consumer service URL um, and they are they're marked as, as being specific to the, to the service provider through the entity ID. Um, in contrast to the service provider initiated um, SAML mechanism, uh, we, if Salesforce is acting as the service provider, we don't require it to, to be set up with, with my domain. So just running through the, the, the flow for identity provider initiated single sign-on. So again, the um, same three system actors that we had in the service provider initiated flow, the browser service provider and the identity provider. We start this flow assuming that the user is already logged in to the identity provider. So I haven't shown those steps, but that, that would have happened um, previous to this part, this part of the flow. So the user will uh, typically click a link, um, so an icon or a link in the identity provider saying, um, yeah, I want to go to page on the service provider. The identity provider will, uh, will construct an, a SAML assertion for, for that user um, and will sign that assertion uh, to be sent over to the service provider. So it'll happen through a uh, HTTP redirect. So the browser will be redirected to the service provider um, with signed assertion included, and that'll be sent to the assertion consumer service URL uh, at the service provider. Um, there's also an attribute, or there's there's an attribute within the assertion, the, the relay state. So this, this can be used in the identity provider flow to, to redirect the user to a, um, a specific page that the identity provider um, wants, wants to send them to. Service provider will then verify the signature on the assertion, so check that it's uh, genuinely from the identity provider. It'll validate the SAML assertion, so it'll check that all of the attributes, the, the required attributes are set, that the structure is, um, is correct, um, and that the, that the issuer is, is set to the entity ID of the identity provider, and the audience is set to the entity ID of the service provider. It'll authenticate the user. So as part of this, uh, the service provider will be checking that from the service provider's perspective that the user is authorized to, to have access. So if, if they're um, checking that they don't have a deactivated account, for example, and the service provider will then uh, issue a session and, uh, and redirect the user to uh, either the resource at the start URL, if, um, if, if, so if Salesforce is the, the service provider, we can configure a start URL with, um, with the, the default page, essentially, that, that the user should be, should be logged into. Um, otherwise, if the service provider supports it, um, it will redirect to the relay status provided by the identity provider. So this would normally just be, just be one of a, of a white list of, of links. So in terms of what else to know, um, so a lot of the considerations are similar or the same to the service provider initiated flow. So if you haven't already, just take, take a look at the, um, the, the run through that, that, 
that I've done for the service provider initiated flow, and essentially all of that, all of that also applies. So things around um, size of XML requests, uh, the need to configure metadata in both the identity provider as well as the service provider, um, all, all of that also applies. There's one sort of big difference from a security perspective I just wanted to dive into a bit more, and it's around the fact that the um, that these assertions are coming unsolicited. So the service provider isn't aware that a user is 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 trying to log in until the the assertion actually actually arrives. Um, so in the in the assertions for um, for an identity provider flow um, the assertions don't have the in response to attribute set because obviously they're not in response to a to a SAML request. So what this means is the service provider isn't uh, can't actually correlate this with activity taken by the user to initiate the the sign on. Um, so there's a couple of potential threat risks around this. So. Um, so there's the potential for the for if we have a through cross site request forgery if we have a man in the middle attack, and the man in the middle um, steals the assertion essentially that they're, they're then able to reuse that assertion. Um, it's also possible through again through cross site request forgery for a man in the middle to um, to provide a, a a different assertion to be to be used um, back to the user's browser. And this can result in the user being logged in as somebody they don't think they're, they're logged in as. Um, so just um, just illustrates how the first of those attacks could work. So if we have a man in the middle that's capable of intercepting an assertion from the identity provider, they're able to then use that assertion uh, as if they themselves are the authorized user. And so the service provider doesn't know any better. It's uh, they're, they're not able to distinguish the man in the middle from the authorized user. Um, the assertion itself is completely valid. It's for a valid user. It's signed with the identity provider certificate. Everything else is required. Um, so it will validate and the service provider uh, would issue a session to, to the man in the middle. Um, there's a few best practices just around trying to minimise the risk around the, these kinds of attacks. They're, 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 it's, it's not perfect mitigation, but it's certainly worth having all of these in place. Um, so ensuring that there's no replays of attacks within the service provider, so an assertion can only be used, used once. Um, making sure that the time window that a service provider um, accepts is is, is is minimized and so that the, the assertion at the very least needs to be used at the same time the user was was trying to log in um, and not allowing open redirects so um so making sure that the um that the urls that are accepted as as relay states parameters um are, are a, a a list of of acceptable urls from the service provider's perspective um, just to call out, there's a really good article just on um, on some of the risks around identity provider initiated single sign-on. I uh, recommend just taking a look at that there. That's that's where this diagram has come from. So main considerations around choosing identity provider initiated version of SAML. Um, first thing I'd say is I don't think it's a good idea to do this unless you really have to. So. If the service provider initiated version of single sign-on is, is appropriate for, for your circumstance, then that's probably the right one to use. And there are a few, few scenarios that mean the identity provider um, initiated version is, is required or is, is, is desirable. So if we're working with an identity provider which doesn't support um, there's service provider initiated version, so potentially a, a, a legacy or, or, or a custom IDP, then um, this might be the only, only option that we've got. Um, if for some reason it's not practical to enable my domain in, in, a, in a Salesforce org that's acting as a service provider, um, I hope there's not many <laughs> orgs left without my domain, um, but, um, but I, I guess this could be a problem for some orgs. Um, so this, this flow has the advantages that, this, that my domain isn't required. Um, and finally, there are um, this, this, uh, circumstances when implementing Canvas apps that, that mean a service provider initiated single sign-on is, isn't, isn't practical. So 
Um, so if we're embedding a Canvas app within a Salesforce org that acts as the identity provider to the, to the app being, being embedded, um, if we use the service provider version, then essentially the, it, the onus is on the, um, the, uh, the, the Canvas app to sort of to, to trigger, um, to trigger the, the authentication mechanism. And depending on, uh, depending on the app that, that's being used, um, there might be some problems uh, iframing the pages that are used as part of the authentication. So, so a good example is Salesforce. So if we're, um, uh, if we're embedding a Salesforce Canvas app within a, a, a Salesforce org that's acting as the identity provider, um, then if the Canvas app org were to redirect to a login page, um, which would be the case with a, with a service provider initiated flow, um, if we have a login page that's, that, that, that's, that's set up and we support more than one login mechanism, then by default the user would be redirected to the Salesforce login page of the Canvas app org um, and a login page can't be iframed. So, so in that instance, the service provider initiated flow wouldn't work. And so when we're in, when we're setting up a Canvas app, there's uh, there's options to uh, to select either identity provider or service provider initiated versions of the um, the single sign-on SAML uh, that's that's used there. So um, so in that circumstance, we might be might be restricted to identity provider for that reason. Um, otherwise, all of the general considerations of a service provider initiated SAML, as, as I mentioned, also apply here. So, so things to think about there as well.